You're watching Funny or Die TV. Zag Morris is trash. Screech says he has his eyes on a young lady. Zack laughs out loud. Screech makes a move, but when her menacing boyfriend arrives, he hides. Zack wants Screech to tell him all about that humiliating thing he just saw happen, then slams a door in his face. Belding has great news. Madonna's the new school nurse? Spoken like a virgin. Bayside is hosting the California Cadet Corps. Lieutenant Adams says it requires discipline and hard work. Zack says, hard pass. Belding wants to know who's in, and Slater says, sign me up. Zack needlessly announces he's out, then laughs at his own dumb ass for the second time in two minutes minutes. Belding is done with Zack's assholery and says he's earned 30 Saturdays of detention. Zack whines like a child about his long overdue punishment. Belding says he'll let Zack off the hook to stop the whining if he joins the Corps. But because they need a full class, Zack has to recruit peers. Zack's delighted to dupe Rubes into joining the army to avoid the consequences of his behavior. Zack tells two nerds the army serves cake at every meal. Then Zack tells the guy who's been threatening his friend. If you join the Corps, you can beat up anybody you want not get in trouble. Then provokes Jesse by saying women don't belong in the army, then reminds Kelly that her family has seven kids and is poor, and an army scholarship could be her one chance at college. Then exploits Lisa's sexual attraction to the lieutenant. But he needs one more sucker. Bingo. Screech strikes out again, and Zack says the only way he can get a girl is by being a real man in the army. Zack paints Screech a fantasy where he becomes a decorated officer who can throw dudes into outer space and gets babe smooches. The gang is nervous, but Zack tells them to relax because it's just the army. Lieutenant Adams is doing his army thing, yelling and such. Zack tells him to chill. The lieutenant tells Zack to drop and give him 20. Zack cracks a dumb joke. Lieutenant says, make it 50. Zack continues to goof, thinking that will decrease his number of push-ups. The lieutenant says, make it 100. Zack considers ways he can maybe bribe this guy. Zack shows up the next day, in his quitting uniform, but Lieutenant Adams says he wants to make a deal. There's an athletic competition, and if Zack's team wins, he can quit with no detention. He'll even let Zack pick the teams. Zack senses nothing suspicious about this man suddenly being nice and agrees to his trap. Zack puts all the nerds and weaklings together on Slater's red team, then picks all the jocks and able-bodied babes for his blue team. Slater says that's unfair, but Zack promises the teams are balanced. The lieutenant says Zack is now on the red team, and Slater is on the blue team, and it shouldn't matter because the teams are balanced. And this was obvious Obviously a trap, you dingus. Slater's team is killing it, thriving with a real leader. Zack's shit is a disaster. The team he built to fail is doing just that, and he's yelling at cadets who are only there because of his lies. Zack's team struggles with the first obstacle of the day, which is all it takes for him to loudly call them losers and storm off like a pouty bitch. Screech pleads with Zack to come back, but Zack says he doesn't want to waste any of his precious beanbag chair magazine time. Screech reminds Zack he's the only reason any of them enlisted. Zack says he lied, so what, and scolds his friend for trusting him. Screech says he used to look up to Zack, but not any anymore, hitting Zack the only place he feels it, his fragile blonde ego. Zack returns, not dressed to compete, and says he's ready to compete. He begs to re-enlist because he can't stand being made to feel like less than Screech. Lieutenant Adams says it's up to his teammates. Zack says he's sorry for calling them losers and he wants back in. They say yes because the team he designed to lose needs him to win, and they have a deep insecurity about losing since he yelled they were losers just one day ago. The games are going great. Who cares? Zack's only win is during American Gladiator combat when he distracts his opponent to sucker punch him. It's all tied up. Each team has to pick one member to run the final obstacle course. But instead of taking that responsibility to make up for the many events he skipped, Zack puts the burden on Screech's shoulders. And Screech wins and gets the girl, no thanks to Zack. Lieutenant Adams says he guesses this is goodbye. Zack says it isn't because he's not a quitter. Except he certainly is because we never see Zack in Cadet Corps ever again. And who knows what happened to Lieutenant Adams, he probably fucking killed himself, let's review. View. Zach Morris disrespected a soldier visiting his school, and instead of accepting his punishment, took a deal where he had to convince students to join the army, which he only accomplished through lies and manipulation, and quit after day one when he had to do push-ups for his insubordination, then was given a second chance that he used to cheat his way onto a winning team. And when the team he built to lose started losing, abandoned everyone, then only returned to repair his damaged ego, and only won a single event because of a sucker punch. And when the pressure was on to win it all, he stepped away like a coward, and didn't learn anything from any of it because he quit one last time right after saying he's not a quitter. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach's reading Making Money magazine. He says the greedy monsters in here are just like him. Big ideas for big money. Zach sees he can get a 900 number, a small idea, and charge two bucks a call, small money. He just needs a gimmick. Jesse's reading letters to a Dear Donna advice column. Lisa always gives the same sound advice as Dear Donna. Zach hears his friend has a natural ability to help others and gets a great idea to exploit her gift for cash. Kelly shows up with her little sister Nikki. Zach asks how the cutest pitcher in seventh grade is, then unnecessarily puts his arm around her, then says she's not just cute, she's smart too. 
and adds, I love this kid. Zack's gratuitous affection sends her impressionable young mind to a fantastical hip hop Cinderella story where Zack has the flow of a drain clogged with rap pubes. <laughs> Before I go, won't you try in the shoe? Because you never know, it might fit you! Screech wonders how much they're going to make with this teen line. Zack breaks out his tiniest calculator and announces they're filthy rich, despite the fact that that screen can only display a maximum of five digits. Lisa interrupts Zack's premature, immature celebration. Zack tells her about the teen line, and Lisa, who has learned from working with Zack in the past, immediately wants to know about the money. Zack chides her for thinking about dollars at a time when helping peers should be top of mind. Lisa tells Zack to cut the bullshit and give her half of everything. Zack says fine, but no more giving aid for free, and don't say nothing about Teen Line to nobody. The Teen Line is going okay. Zack, I mean, Nitro. Teen Line, this is Nitro. Is giving Lisa's advice, wrapped in his very dumb accent. Hey, well, about to watch a little lie to you love, Poen. Kelly's sister calls and says she really likes a guy, but he's taken. Nitro asks how he feels about her. Nikki says the guy says he loves her. Zack hears nothing familiar about this story he's a central character in and tells Nikki to go for it with the guy who has a girlfriend because... All's fair and true love and war. Which isn't even the right quote, but whatever. Nikki arrives the next day, looking like an online predator sting operation, and tells Zack she wants to be his girlfriend. Zack sees no issue with the fact that she's 13, but mentions Kelly as a potential obstacle. Nikki regurgitates Zack's inaccurate quote about romance, and he finally connects these very large dots. Teen line. Zack says Nikki must have received advice from a moron, accurate, and tells her to beat it before Kelly shows up. Nikki says she'll go, but not before she gets a goodbye kiss. Zack shoves her tiny ass in a locker. Kelly says Nikki has her first crush, but she won't say who it is. Zack says he's probably a great guy, while imprisoning a young girl in a small dark metal box. Nikki says she won't leave until Zack gives her a kiss. So instead of walking away from this 90 pound child, Zack kisses her and embraces her where everyone in school can see. Screech says Teen Line is a hit because Lisa solved everyone's problems. No problems means no calls, so Zack fires Lisa for doing her job. Then tries to get out of paying her, which he only begrudgingly agrees to do under the threat of blackmail as Lisa is forced to stoop to his level. Zack gets the bright idea to start giving bad advice, so students will be unhappy, then call in for more advice, creating an infinite loop of income mined for misery. His first victim? Telling his friend Slater to break up with his other friend, Jesse. Jesse's in the middle of explaining to Kelly that Zack is really kissing her little sister at school when Slater walks in and breaks up with her. Jesse runs off to cry, and Zack yells at her to call Teen Line, then scans the room for more lives to ruin. He sees the recipient of that jock's poem and tells her it's plagiarized. Another happy future bites the dust. Kelly calls Teen Line and says she thinks her boyfriend is dating her kid sister. But instead of coming clean, Zack calls Lisa, the person he wrongfully terminated, to beg for advice in this glaringly simple dilemma. Lisa shrewdly demands the rest of Zack's depression dough, then says be honest with Kelly and let Nikki off gently. Fucking duh. Zack thinks he's talking to Nikki because phones are hard, and tells Kelly it sounds like this dude is into her sister and she should be with someone else. Click, bitch. Then drops his lame accent to tell Nikki, I'm the one running the teen line, and you're the only Kapowski I care about. But don't tell your sister. We should let her down gently. Don't worry, Zack. I won't tell Kelly. Whoops, bitch. Meanwhile, in art class, everyone is fighting because Zack instigated a school-wide gender war with his malicious and predatory 900 number. Belding brings this hormone hurricane to his office where they all realize they got conflicting advice from Teen Line. Belding deduces Zack and Screech, the only unscathed students in the room, are culpable for this debacle and tells them they have until tomorrow to make it right. Zack wants Lisa to fix his many messes, starting with the young girl he's told to hook up with him twice. Lisa says he needs to convince Nikki he's gross, should be easy enough, which gives Zack another great idea. Yeah. Then Lisa starts undoing Zack's long trail of misguidance, student by student, wasting valuable time and energy these youths should be spending on anything else in the prime of their lives. Lisa sees Kelly's depressed after being told off over the phone by a man with a bad accent, and tells her to come to the max and hide out in that booth in a very inconspicuous outfit. Zack arranges a date with Nikki where he performs a nerd minstrel show. He introduces Nikki to his pet spider, Leonard. She's into it. He acts like a messy dork, and she's down. He invites her to the insect rodeo, and she already has front row seats, because Kapowski women are apparently the most amazing women on earth. Zack comes clean that he's actually in love with Kelly. Nikki realizes Zack did all this to push her away and shames him for being a dork, a real dork, because he couldn't tell a 13 year old girl the truth. And a mentally battered Kelly picks up the scraps Nikki was smart enough to leave behind. And Nikki, heartbroken her older sister has been brainwashed by this bozo, is never seen again because she probably fucking killed herself.
Let's review. Zach Morris saw his friend's ability to help others as a way to get rich quick. And after leading his girlfriend's little sister on, told her to hook up with a guy who has a girlfriend. Which is bad already, but even worse because he was talking about himself. Then when she acted on his advice, he shoved her in a locker to keep it a secret from her sister. Then became physically intimate with her in public, leading her on more. Then fired the only good thing about his teen line, and started giving deliberately bad advice to make the whole school miserable for his financial gain. Then told his girlfriend to get lost, and told her little sister to hook up with him again. Then used the person he fired to clean up his mess, and still didn't have the minuscule amount of decency and courage required to be honest with a 13 year old girl, until it was his absolute last resort. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. <laughs> You're watching Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. And now, the shirtless painter. Ah! <gasps> oh, man. It was only a dream. <sighs> Zach Morris is trash. Rick and Trevor from the Rigmas tell Zach only the coolest kids get invited to wear a red Rigma jacket, but apparently they're willing to overlook that because they ask Zach if he wants to pledge. Zach jumps at the opportunity to prove himself worthy of joining a fake middle school fraternity. The Rigmas promptly begin dehumanizing Zach, making him dress like a bozo and sing show tunes in class. Zach is tiptoeing around school, hiding like a coward from the people he's allowing to torment him, then obeys like a dog when they order him to do jumping jacks for his peers. Mikey questions this nonsense, but Zach says it's all worth it for a dumb red jacket. The Rigmas make Zach wear a bathing suit to class, dangerously close to having his ball slip out in geometry. Totally worth it for the jacket. Rick and Trevor dangle the jacket in front of Zack, but say before he can wear it, he needs to ditch those losers he calls friends. Zack approaches his day one pals and says he's sorry for what he's about to do, but he has to do it for the jacket. Zack loudly exposes Mikey's secret crush. Unforgivable. Rick and Trevor approve. Then tells Lisa he's going to call her parents to snitch on her for wearing makeup at school. Dick. Move. Clap, 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 clap. Then shoves a piece of cake in Nikki's face. Zero creativity there. And when Screech says he thought they were friends, Zack says he would never be friends with a nothing like Screech. This child has no soul. Zack's abhorrent malice is rewarded with a jacket from two assholes that's worth about as much as a nickel covered in bird shit. Zack strolls into class and tries to act like it's all good, but it's not all good. It's all bad because he publicly humiliated everyone. And his former friends rightfully shun this backstabbing Judas. Zack tells them to relax because now that he's a Rigma, they can all be friends again. On weekends and stuff. Terms and conditions apply. The gang doesn't want Zack's friendship leftovers and toss his red jacket around until he cries like a weenie, which happens right away. Miss Bliss gets caught up to speed. Zack assaulted a student with pie, ruined Mikey's life, and really called Lisa's parents at home to leave a message about her makeup. Zack says the only reason they're all here is because these losers threw his jacket around, a defense that ignores several crucial details. When Miss Bliss asks if these allegations are true, Zack says absolutely not. Because he just hit Nikki with a piece of pie, not a whole pie. Another partially accurate response that once again omits many pertinent facts. Zack says they're all just jealous of his sweet jacket. More lies. Miss Bliss says this red jacket just cost him four friends. Zack tells the gang he's given it some thought, and he's choosing them over the jacket. But they don't want anything to do with him, because he really needed someone else to explain that a jacket is worth less than four people. So Zack immediately turns his back on them again to go sit with the Rigmas. Rick and Trevor have one more surprise for Zack. In order for them to get into the Rigmas, they had to find a gullible sucker and make him believe he was pledging, then get him to do a bunch of horrible stuff. Zack wants to know where they could ever find someone so idiotic. Hey dum dum, they're talking about your blonde ass. The gang comes over to make sure Zack understands how much it's sucks to be humiliated over a jacket, then graciously take him back. Because unlike Zack, they're not total buttholes and can think for themselves to assess a situation. But before Zack throws that jacket in the garbage, where he should put his entire body, he gets approval from the gang because he remains incapable of independent thought. Let's review. Zach Morris wanted to join a middle school pseudo fraternity just to get a red jacket. And to get that jacket was willing to humiliate himself all over school. Then to earn the approval of people who have done nothing but torture him, brutally destroyed the friendships he had with the people who actually care about him. Then tried to act like nothing happened and 
completely ignored any role he had in this situation. And when he said he had a change of heart, but his victims were understandably still upset, he changed his heart again and went right back to his abusers, and found out the shocking news that they had bad intentions this whole time. And all the despicable things he did for that red jacket were pointless, which was always the case, because it was just a stupid red jacket, which he really valued more than the dignity of four human beings. Five if you include Zack, which I certainly don't. Let's call it four. Zack Morris is trash. Zack Morris is trash. I'm yelling, man. Ah! This is Funny or Die TV. You're watching Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. And now, Yelling Man. Welcome to Yelling Man. Today, I'm yelling about crystals. We should all be collecting more crystals. They're beautiful. All these people now, they collect crystals because of energy or something, and hey, that's fine. But it's okay to collect crystals even if you aren't into that stuff. You are allowed to collect crystals. Zach Morris is trash. It's the annual Bayside Sweetheart Dance. Slater's giving his heart to Kelly when Zack rudely interrupts to help this woman make up her mind. Slater says Zack probably can't even go because he's in trouble for vandalizing the pool and using a teacher's toupee as an eraser. And Belding's meeting tomorrow with his mom to talk about how disappointed she must be in her failure of a son. Lisa and Kelly are loving the new tape from Beau Revere. Mr. Belding says he prefers the sounds of the Beach Boys. Zack says he loves the Beach Boys in a pathetic and unsuccessful attempt to suck up to avoid tomorrow's meeting. Miss Wentworth is receiving various gifts from kind students and also Zach. She says they'll be learning about subliminal ads with hidden messages. Movie theaters use them to trick patrons into buying snacks. Zach says that would never work on his feeble mind. Except it would, because it did. Yesterday, Miss Wentworth played a tape for the class with a concealed vocal track instructing them to bring her all these goodies. She warned, subliminal advertising is unpredictable and should be used with extreme caution. Word Zach ignores with no delay. He wants to give Belding a Beach Boys tape with hidden messages to get out of that meeting with his mom. Screech rightfully questions Zach's proposal, so Zach calls him an idiot and punches him. He records a tape saying, Zach Morris is a good kid. Lies. Zach Morris is a great student. More lies. Zach Morris is a fine human being. The most lies. Zach Morris is the son I never had. The truth, thank God. Zach gifts Belding his surf rock propaganda and says it's a new enhanced recording. Belding says thanks, but he's still in trouble. Kelly accepts the invite of a suitor who isn't a juvenile delinquent. Belding is bumping Zach's brainwash tape when he walks in for his mom meeting, minus his mom, because he told her not to come. Belding doesn't care because Zach Morris is a good kid and, despite his vandalism, a fine human being. And, despite his failing grades, a great student. Then Belding says he's the son he never had, and gives him some of his hard-earned salary to have fun at the dance. Zack gets a great idea to use this wildly immoral machination on girls. Zack begins playing brain surgeon by having Screech distribute tapes to nerds so they can get their dream girls. It works like a charm, and three young ladies are helplessly duped into romantic relationships and probably their first sexual experiences against their will. Then Zack sends Screech to the female locker room in disguise under the alias Barbara. Bush. Screech swaps their Beau Revere tapes and is once again forced to hide in a locker for one of Zack's schemes. Kelly tells Zack she does not want to go to the dance with Slater, then begs Zack to take her, then callously rips off Slater's heart in front of everyone. Lisa finds Screech in yet another locker for some reason and pleads with the guy she's been endlessly avoiding to be her date. Jesse's listening to Kelly's Beau Revere tape and tells Mac she has a date for the dance, but suddenly wants to go with Zack, because Zack's the kind of guy every girl dreams of, plus a bunch of other dumb crap. Lisa tells Jesse the thrilling news that Screech says he'll go to the dance with her. But when Jesse raises concern, Lisa says she's just jealous. Kelly says she dumped Slater to go with Zack, because Zack's the kind of guy every girl dreams of. Then repeats all that dumb crap in unison with Jesse. They realize something is very wrong, because they both had nice dates, and now they're fighting over a blonde scumbag. They look around at Zack's museum of manipulation and say it's like the school has been brainwashed. They figure out Zack must have abused their lesson on movie candy to psychologically influence girls using their tapes. Then recognize that locker room stranger was his accomplice, Screech, after being forced to picture him naked. The girls listen to the isolated vocal track and hear, Zack Morris is a blonde Tom Cruise, among other disturbing falsehoods. They devise a plan to stop Zack before he escalates his tapes to ploys that will likely soon include robbery and murder. Principal Belding announces they're going to start playing a song a day for funsies. And today is this tape from Kelly Kapowski's personal collection. It starts with Jesse, and soon every woman in earshot, including Miss Wentworth, is aggressively coming on to Zack. He does nothing to try and snap them out of it. They swarm him in the hall like zombies. Even Slater gets in on the fun. Zack runs like a punk. Zack bursts into Belding's office and demands he turn the music off, then finally 
finally tells him the truth out of fear of being mobbed to death. Mr. Belding says Zack looks like a blonde Tom Cruise. Zack whines at everyone. Stop loving me. They explain the tape that's playing has no secret message, and this was all an elaborate setup. A setup that prevented everyone in school from getting an education that day to end his reign of mental tyranny. Let's review. Zack Morris learned that hidden messages are effective and dangerous, and immediately used that information to brainwash his way out of trouble, while for some reason also making a grown man love him as if he was his son. Then set out to manipulate young women, using nerds and mentally paralyzed girls as his guinea pigs. Then made a guy invade a female changing room to trick two of his best friends into unwanted physical intimacy, while sabotaging a blossoming relationship. And pushed an entire high school to stop everything. In an urgent attempt to curtail his sociopathic, evil villain zeal for mind control, that should have had him imprisoned for life, then and there. Zack Morris is a blonde Tom Cruise. Nope. Zack Morris is trash. Zack Morris is trash. <laughs>